Hi there, welcome to Miriam's Manor. I am Miriam. Thank you guys so much for joining me back. Today I am putting another Christmas Village quick tip video together for you. So I have some new tips that I wanted to give to you all, but I also have received so many wonderful questions over the last several weeks that I wanted to address in this video to answer all of your questions, just in case you all might have, have the same question. And I also wanted to share some comments that I received from you all and share with the group so that we can all uh, get feedback and incorporate that into our personal villages. I also want to make a quick note, if you guys have any tips that I have not addressed in my first or second quick tip video, please leave me a line in the comment section. What I'll do is compile all of those tips and I'll make another video and that way we can all benefit from it and share with uh, best practices that might work best for us. So let's go ahead and get started on tip number one. Okay, so tip number one, I would definitely say would to be plan out your buildings according to the space that you have available to work with for your Christmas village. One of my first mistakes that I did when I started villaging was I found a ton of buildings on sale and I bought them all. And when I very when I went to put my village together, I was stressed out trying to figure out how to fit all these buildings into this tiny little space. And I didn't then have platforms built and things like that to work with. So it was very challenging for me and I tried to stuff them all in. But in my opinion, the best villages are when you can actually set the scene for each building that you have. So if you're talking about a residential area, it's nice when you can actually leave room for a front yard, maybe a backyard, driveway, trees, roads, and things like that leading to and from the houses. I think that um, creating the scene is more important than the amount of buildings that's in your actual village. I've seen very small villages that might have only five or six buildings, but because they've been uh, displayed and laid out, they're so beautifully done. So that would be my first tip, is not necessarily getting caught up on the amount of buildings or the size that you're working with, but more so creating a scene for each building or house that you may have to display. So you really have my husband to thank for tip number two. Two years ago, he surprised me and brought this base home. Um, quick side note, by the way, you can check out his YouTube channel at TMDDTM. He covers a wide range of topics but has several videos on millwork and feature walls that he builds. But this base, bringing this home, was really right up his alley. In previous years, I would put my village on a regular table, put styrofoam on top of that, and then really fight to try to hide my cords. But now, what I do is just drill holes in the top of this board, and then I am able to drop my cords exactly where each building is going to be placed every year. So this saves me so much time and hassle trying to straighten everything up on the technical side of things. But it has also enhanced the look of my village. It's more clean and streamlined, and I just love the way the finished product looks now. So the Sawhorse brand that I use that's underneath this um, particle board is called Genuine Burrow Brand. We also got these at Lowe's. They were about $30 a piece. The board that's on the top is a three-quarter inch particle board. Uh, one board is four feet by eight feet, and they are approximately $22 at Lowe's. So tip number three would still be to add a styrofoam top on top of the wooden base that you use. I line up my holes exactly the same to match the holes that I already created in my wood base. To do this, I just climb underneath the table, take my hot knife, and follow the same circle pattern that is in the wood through to the styrofoam so that you can see here the holes line up perfectly. 
Tip four, the reason I still use a styrofoam base is because I make a lot of my own trees like this one here and I like to be able to just stick the tree directly into the foam. I also unscrew the base of my store bought trees and stick them directly into the foam for a more natural look. So I received a comment from Jenny. She actually hot glues her upholstery tacks to the bottom of her trees, figurines, lamp posts, etc. and sticks the tacks directly into her foam base. So I wanted to share that with you all because I've never done it before and I thought it was such a good idea. So thanks Jenny for that tip and I hope you guys find it useful as well. Okay, so tip number five is on the technical side of things still. Um, but this is a power strip. The reason that I wanted to point this out to you is because I like buying the ones that have the space for the AC adapters on one side and then space that you can still run regular cords on the other side. This is important because sometimes when your power strips are just like this, you can't necessarily fit two lights next to each other and a power adapter. You can see how it takes up or covers part of that second part of the outlet. So when you when they have the space on one side where the uh, outlets are spaced, then you have enough room to run your AC adapters on one side and then on the other side, you have room for the regular lighted cords. Now this one is a GE brand and I picked this up at Walmart, I think two years ago and I wanna say it was like, $15 and it has um, eight outlets on it with an eight foot cord. This year, because I'm putting my village in the middle of my floor, I needed more space or a longer cord. So this year I bought this big boy. Now I found this one on Amazon. I'll put the link to this in the description box. This was $35. It has 12 outlets on it and it comes in a 15 foot extension cord. Now you can see I've got plenty of room for every AC adapter and the out the next outlet next to it will not be blocked whether I have AC adapters and then the regular outlets for the lights. So this is going to really change the game for me this year because I will only need two of these to light my whole village instead of, I normally use three to four, depending on the setup that I use every year. So this is really um, helping me out with my outlet space that I use every year. So tip number six, and we are moving on to some more of the funner things of villaging, like getting to the decorating. So this is the brand of snow that I use. I did receive a few comments on the snow. So it's the Buffalo Snow brand. I got this big bag at Walmart. This is the value size bag. And I got this for $5 at Walmart. They do sell the same brand of this at Michael's. It is a little bit more expensive at Michael's per bag, especially I did not see these giant size bags at Michael's. They had the regular size for $5, but this was at Walmart for $5 for the value size bag. I also use the same brand for the snow flurries. This is Buffalo Snow Snow Flurries. I put this on top of my snow once I'm done laying my snow. I did use this on my ski slope when I built this this year, as well as all throughout the rest of my snow village. And I only used one and a half bags of these. And I do have a pretty big setup. My village is 16 square feet. It's an eight by eight foot square. So uh, one bag really does go a long way. If you have a larger setup, you might want to use maybe two, but uh, one bag should do the trick for most people. All right, so moving on to tip number seven, and this would be roads. I've gotten a few questions on this road that I use in my snow village. This I printed from a website. I'll have the website address listed below here for you. This is a road that you can print out. Instead of buying those narrow strips, if you wanted to create a large, um, 
road or a wider road. You can print this out, as many as you want out, and then link them together. There's instructions on their website of how they suggest that you link the brick pattern together so that it looks more natural. I print mine on cardstock so that it's a lot thicker and more durable. I printed this one out three years ago and it still is in really good condition. And I, I have several of them printed out that I use randomly in different places every year. It looks really good once it's down. You can also put this on a really thin piece of plywood if you even want it to last a little bit longer and be more sturdy. I just lay it flat down and put my snow flurries on top um, because I just prefer a easier cleanup when I'm all done. But this road was genius. I love the way it looks. I love the cobblestone of it. And I wasn't ever able to find any road to purchase that has this gray look um, in the store. So when I found this online, I was super excited. So definitely visit that website. You guys can also, they have other tips on this website too, not just for roads, but they have other tips on how to do things for your Christmas village. So definitely check them out because they do have a lot of good, awesome, useful information. All right, so tip eight is to take this floral pin here that I got at Hobby Lobby and press it into my foam to hold this cord in place. This cord is controlling my smaller objects like my spotlights, but you can also use this for your building cords as well. Okay, so tip nine would be more for your base, but also for anything that you wanna build for your ski village with the styrofoam i do i have gotten a few questions on where do you get your foam i actually just use the insulation foam that they sell at lowe's it's a four by eight foot piece of styrofoam it does have a coating on it that i just rip off um, but it's the most amount of styrofoam for the cheapest price that i've been able to find anywhere it's about 18 dollars per sheet and um it's the insulation foam. So I will also have the link to that Lowe's website for the styrofoam in the description box if you're interested in purchasing that and using it for your snow village. Um, one thing that I also do is I keep everyone on standby. My close friends and my family know that styrofoam is gold to me because I'm always building something. So they, if they get a large package or especially a furniture package, it always has styrofoam in it. So they save the styrofoam for me and either drop it off or I go pick it up and I'll save it even in my garage sometimes for months before I get ready to build something. But that way, if um, I don't feel like buying styrofoam, I've got some already in my garage and I have a little, um, a little section of styrofoam accumulating in my garage for all my builds. All right, so we're finally at the end. Tip number 10. Tip number 10 is to cover your base that you're working with, whether you use a tablecloth to put over your table or if you've got a styrofoam base or a wood base that like something like I'm working with. What I do is I picked up this fabric and it's like a fleece but it looks so good and it looks like snow and I just use my staple gun and I staple gun it to the front of my um, plywood that I use for my base and then I just cover that with a little bit of snow over it. So this, it really does give the look of snow. And when I put my snow flurries on the snow border, some of them kind of fall down this. So it gives the illusion of looking like a blanket of snow. So I found this at Joann's Fabrics. I printed off the coupon online before I went in there. So I got enough of this fabric to go around my entire space that is 16 square feet and I want to say I paid $17 for it now this was three years ago but they always have sales on their fabrics and you can always um, print out their coupons that they have online at Joann's Fabrics so that is tip number 10
So I really wanna thank you guys for taking the time for hanging out with me today and listening to all of these tips that I had to offer. Again, if you guys have tips that I did not mention, please leave them in the comment section. My hope and goal is, is that we can create a community of villagers and we can share all of our tips and ideas that work best for us. So don't forget to do that. Also, share this video with anyone that you know, again, that might love villaging as much as we do and maybe some of what I've gone over today might be useful for others as well. Um, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and give me a big thumbs up if this has helped you and if you guys have liked the video. Also, click on that notification bell because now that I've done this, I was waiting for my power strips to arrive. Um, they just came today. So I am going to complete my snow village in the next couple of days and I will be dropping that video next week. So turn on that notification bell so you guys don't miss it. And like always, until I see you again, God bless you and your family. Stay safe. And I look forward to seeing you really soon. Bye.